Thank you, Katie. And now we move from piracy to Greenland. We're going to hear a talk from Matt Loretsen, who's undertaking a six-month research project with Nuki Sirofit, Greenland's national energy company. And he's also a student at the Iceland School of Energy at Reykjavik University. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy to see so many of you tonight. I was actually expecting a lot fewer, but it's okay. Now, as Hedla mentioned, I have my student here at Iceland School of Energy. I've lived here for a year. I am originally from Denmark. And when last June I had the opportunity to go to Greenland to work with Nukusia Fit, so nicely pronounced, uh, on how to bring sustainable energy to the smaller communities in Greenland. And when I'm saying the smaller communities, it's pretty much every single city and settlement in Greenland. Um, so that's what I'm doing, and that's what I'm going to present. I'm going to present a case study of what I'm doing now. Yes. As you can see, Greenland is a big place. There's a lot of distance to cover. And it's pretty much all covered by the same company, the company I'm doing research for and with. Nugasifit is the national energy and electricity and hot water producer in Greenland. Uh, in 2005, they implemented a new strategy. They have the aim of within the next 30 to 50 years to make Greenland completely sustainable in electricity production. Uh, and we're right now testing wind and solar and geothermal energy with a lot of experts from Iceland, actually. Uh, but the main part of the future electricity is going to come from hydropower. This is a fairly known technology, and it has been developed in North America and Europe for hundreds of years. But in Greenland, the first plant went into operation in the early 90s. So it's a fairly new technology in Greenland, and it has caused some problems. We heard about the technical problems in the break sessions, breakout session a couple of days ago, so I won't speak about that. Uh, but approximately 70% of the electricity consumed in Greenland is now from hydropower. And that's a pretty big shift. Not only because it's sustainable and we all like to see fewer CO2 emissions, but also because it's cheaper. Greenland is more self-sustaining. You don't have to import oil anymore. And basically no one likes the smell of diesel generators in your village or settlement. So we're looking for the next project right now. What is the next thing we can do to bring us closer to the aim of being 100% sustainable? And this could be the project. It's the project I'm working at. It's a, it's a small, small city. It's the eighth largest in Greenland, around 1,500 people, making it the eighth largest. Uh, it's in, located in one of the hotter areas. It's quite warm there compared to the rest of the country. Uh, the main like, occupation is fishing. Like, we've all been talking about fish so far, and fish is a big thing in this community in particular, because it's seeing a very rapid decline. It is pretty much dying out, some would say. This is the population from Bermuda, starting it in 1980 and ending right now. The population has effectively been cut in half. And with the population cut in half, their energy demand is also cut in half, making the market we're trying to produce electricity to much, much smaller and making it a lot more difficult to actually find a viable solution to provide this town with energy. So what happened in 1980s? What happened? You're probably, you're probably expecting some like global warming, something like that. It's not that complicated. As people have been talking about fish here, fish migrate. They do not stay in one place forever. So in the 1980s, the cod, like, the cod that was in South Greenland started to migrate further north. This is not, due, it is not only due to global warming. It has been reported many times in Greenland's history. 
And the people have known this. People move with the fishing population, fish. People live where the fish are. But this gives us a really significant problem. Because how do we design, how do we invest in a settlement when we know that in 20 years the settlement could be gone? We know that the settlement could be twice the size. How do we invest in this? How do we create this? And we don't really have the answer. That's the thing. Because we don't see any viable solution. And that is where I'm not like giving answers here. I'm just telling it as it is. We don't know how to do this. And we cannot make it financially viable to invest in these large infrastructure projects in Greenland. So our vision of creating a totally sustainable energy sector in Greenland is, is in a thin thread right now. Um, but this also, apart from our financial investment strategies, is also really highlights the importance of, of nature, people, and investment. So when we're talking about development in the Arctic, we need to talking not about how to invest in communities, but how do we really invest in people instead. We don't need to invest in the city, we need to invest in the people in the country. And that was pretty much everything I have to say. Thank you. <laughs>